Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the new universal USB hub solution from the guys at Moza Racing. This hub will allow sim racers to use Moza's shifters, handbrakes, pedals, and other controllers without plugging them into one of their wheelbases. Time to put it through the SRG's review process and see how it does. So, let's get to it. Let's take a closer look at this Moza wheel adapter system they are now offering. Now, of course, the whole reason for this is so that somebody can use the Moza wheels on other direct drive wheel bases. And we have the adapter that mates to this, what I call an NRG type of quick release that has the ball bearings. We got six on top, four on the bottom. And this will interface with that. Now, this is similar to what we have on their actual wheel base. And here's their the gold hub here. And this is the adapter and this is the adapter. But this one is smaller in diameter than this guy is because this is a 60 millimeter PCD, kind of a non-industry standard adapter spacing. And this one is a 70, which is an industry standard. Some people also call this the Momo spacing. Now, on the outside, we have 70 millimeters. On the inside, we have something else. Now, this is a triangle pattern, all right? Now, the only thing I've had here in the SRG for triangle pattern would be a semi-cube. Once you take that everything apart and get down to the hub that's on their motor. And this is a 40, I don't know, it's about 43 millimeter from here to here and from here to here. All right. So I'm not sure about that, but that's the first thing I thought of when I saw it. And of course the regular 75 here. Now these holes also are not threaded and they have a countersunk feature on them. I can see that down there which is similar to the way that the semi-cube, if I remember correctly, how that attached. Oh, but we are threaded with M5 threads on the others, which can be good or can be an interference problem with how you're going to attach this to a hub. But we'll talk about mounting in a little bit later and get to that point. Also, we have a through hole here. You can see there are some similarities here to the hub that's on their wheel bases because we have this little step here. And that would be for this contact piece that bolts into this particular adapter. Although we don't have these screw holes in there, obviously, for it. So, yeah, it's very similar, but not similar. <laughs> All right, so what else are we going to talk about? We also get this guy. Now, this hub is for more than just attaching a wheel and then getting USB functionality out of the back of it. If you look at the front, we've also got base, which I'm assuming is a wheel base. This wheelbase does not have an RJ11 designated port for this. So we would still be running the wheel off a separate USB, which is probably what I would be doing anyway, even if I did have that option. Because, yeah, I'd rather run this separate USB, even though you can run it through this. Now, there are five different things listed here, right? We've got a wheel, we've got a dash shifter, and a handbrake. Well, actually, that's four. Five words, though. <laughs> so that's four things for these three ports. You can see that line indicates that. So only the wheelbase, from the labeling anyway, is the only thing we can stick in here. Now on the back, we have a port for their pedals. Now this port is an RJ45 port, as far as the dimensions go. We have the USB-B, which will go through the computer, and we have an auxiliary, what they call power supply, for the hub. So that would turn this into a powered hub. Now, they don't give you a power supply with this, so I'm assuming that we would just use a USB-A to a USB-C, which, by the way, they include, and we'll take a look at that in a minute, to add some power to this, which makes sense, especially if you're hooking up a wheel that has one of these things on it, a dash. So that's going to require more power. So nothing is worse than not having enough power through a USB hub and all kinds of strange things start happening to your controllers. Always use powered hubs. The high power ones, like 7 amp, I get the highest power ones I can get because, yeah, it just eliminates all the gremlins that you can get. This is going to be 5 volt because it'll be coming off a computer. Or even I can plug this into my powered hub. So it should have plenty of power in that case. But it's good that they thought this through <laughs> and pretty much figured, well, just a single 5 volt input 
Yeah, most PCs, motherboards aren't going to have the current capabilities to supply enough power to all the peripherals that they say that you can put in here, right? So this is something that they're going to be using moving forward to populate, I suppose, all their stuff too. All right, we also get a cord here. Now this is an RJ11 because it only has four wires in it. I can get you to focus here. Yeah, there's only four wires in there, even though there's the capability or room for six because there's six contact points in there. So it's an RJ11. We're only using four of them. And all of these ports here are RJ11s. You can see they have four contacts on them. And if we go back here and look at the RJ45, you can see we have the full complement of contacts for that, which are eight. What else can we look at here? I guess that's about it. It's aluminum housing. Feels pretty solid. The finish is good. Again, just like everything else I get from Moza, it looks professionally done. And we'll take a look inside of this once we get to that point. We get this USB B cord. And of course it goes through USB A. We can plug this into a power hub or we can plug it into the PC. I do like the fact they actually have some molded in ferrites here. Of course to cut down on EMI interference. And we also get this that I already told you about, purple. <laughs> and this is for the USB-C that's on the back here. So we could plug this in a computer or another powered hub, probably a powered hub for me. And then we could plug this in here to make sure we have enough juice. And then we got five volt here and we've got another five volt input here. So when we're running a wheel like this with a dash in it, yeah, it should be able to have plenty of power to take care of everything. But we'll see when we get there. And of course, I'm just going to be running the wheel. I'm not going to be running a dash or all the other things that we can put in here, a shifter or a handbrake, that kind of thing. It'll just be the wheel. So I'm sure it's going to work fine. In fact, I may not have to use this, but I don't know. This does have a dash in it, so we'll see. What else can we talk about? That's about it. That's all that comes in the kit. Got your wires, got your cables. We got an adapter and we have, again, the controller box itself. Now, when we come back, we'll take a look at what I'm going to do as far as getting this adapter mounted and any issues or complications that come with that. Let's take a look inside of this hub. They're calling this the SO3 hub on their website. It is secured with a couple of plates on the front in the back and an aluminum extruded piece in the center holding the board. And I've got one of the screws here. I'll show you the little socket head cap units, M2.5s. Easy enough to take off. And I just left the back one because I found out this would just slide right out. So we'll go ahead and do that. And when it slides out, there's actually two grooves in here, one on each side of this extrusion that they put in. This, this is a custom extrusion, and it slides in there. And once we put the screws in and tighten everything down, it holds it tightly. Instead of putting some standoffs in here and screwing it in from the bottom, it's a little bit cleaner install, I think, that way. So you can see those grooves there on either side. So this rides in the middle of that. Very neat and clean looking circuit board, as you might expect. We have our USB-B the main input here. Then we have the USB-C auxiliary. And of course we can see the power circuit in here. Supported by the usual suspects here. We see a couple of actually pretty large capacitors. And we have a inductor here, a large diode, a couple of smaller supporting diodes here. And over here we also have another inductor. So that's probably a less powerful rail in here and a bunch of Looks like capacitors and yeah, I don't see a diode on that one. But anyway, that's so if we, when we're using the auxiliary power, we have the larger capacitors inductor to handle the extra current and that you will be using if you have a lot of pieces actually plugged into these ports. Speaking of which, we can see the ports are, have their own supporting circuitry on each port. We're using a stem, yeah, stem 32. I think you guys could see that. And on the bottom, you can read that this is a 10922 board, SO3 hardware, it says, hub version 04. You guys can read that there. Yeah. 
So again, very neat looking board, as you might expect. Not a whole lot to it that you would also expect, considering what it's doing. And yeah, I don't see anything to complain about here. I didn't think I would because of everything I get from Moza as far as their, their electronic circuit layout and things like that. It's just industry standard stuff, real professional looking. All right, so we're ready to mount our adapter to our hub on our servo motor. Now this is a MIDGE 20 or a 20 Newton meter peak MIDGE motor, part of the Virtual Racing Schools Force Feedback Pro Wheel system. And they have this hub that you can buy that it clamps to the shaft of the motor, just like most servo motors work. Now I'm gonna be attaching this on here like so, or maybe not. Here's the thing. There are threads, like a lot of the hubs that come on or kits that come with your servos, there's going to be threads in here. Or if it's just a clamp and then you have an adapter that gives you that 70 millimeter PCD, typically they're going to be threaded with M5 threads. This is also threaded though. And that presents a bit of a problem the way I was going to attach it. Now there's ways to get around that, but we'll look at that in a second. So I've got threads and I'll use this is actually a Cole Morgan adapter, but you can see this also has threads in it, M5, and their 70 millimeter PCD spacing here. So I have a M5 screw, a little socket head cap unit, and I'm going to put that in here first. Let me just go ahead and screw it in to where it protrudes a little bit out the back. And the problem is this, the threads don't start right at the hole. There's a little space there and it usually has a little bit of a camphor or chamfer, what do you want to call it, to it. All right, so the screw's gonna, gonna go down in that before it actually can engage any threads. So the problem is if this doesn't engage the threads in here exactly right, then once I screw this in, it's gonna be still loose. So I, I can't get it tight, even though the bolt or the screw will be tight. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's pick out one of these here. And I'm going to take it out first. Once I find the hole, I just kind of gently pull it back out a little bit. or And then go ahead and see if I can get it to go back in. And there it goes. So now it's on the hub, yet if I tighten this down as hard as I can, it can't go any further. You can see there's a space in there because the threads just don't sync up properly for me to be able to go straight in. Now, sometimes you can get that on a hub. You know, if you're lucky, I'm gonna actually take this back out and pull it further out and try that again. But, and sometimes you engage the threads and it won't even turn. And you don't wanna force that obviously, because all you're gonna do is mess up your threads. So either I can't get it in, or if I push it a little, a little further and get it to where it'll go in, I don't, get a nice tight clamp pressure. So that's what happens. Now, sometimes, like I said, it works. But then the, it working for six holes on the six holes on here, so you're really rolling the dice to be lucky there. <laughs> but sometimes it does work. For the most part, it doesn't. So I was thinking that probably Moses should do two, one of two things here. Put another set of 70 millimeter PCD holes in here that aren't threaded or just make these holes not threaded because most of the hubs are going to have threads on them. Now there's other ways to get around this and that is using an extension or a, a hub adapter to a whatever you want to call them. This is a rather large one. I use this on my rig because I like to get the monitors behind the steering wheel as close as I can. So this allows me to do that and still have, because it's a motion system, have the room for it to move around and not whack the wheel or hit the monitors when it comes back or forth, right? So this type of adapter has no threads in it, right? And over here, the same thing, there's no threads on this side. Now there are threads in this little quick release adapter I have, but I can run these screws through those threads and they're protruding on the other side and just kind of sit it on top of here because the pattern's the same. And then I put my nylock nuts on there and you're good to go. So if you have something like, and of course they make these in very short versions. So you could get something like this and put it on here and also put this part on the front, right? And just have bolts and nuts to get it done. 
But there's other extensions that don't even do that. Here's the a pretty aluminum one. It has threaded holes and non-threaded holes, but the non-threaded holes are only on one side. So I could still get this attached here, but then I have threaded holes on this side, which presents me with the same problem if I'm using a flange that already has threads in it, right? I'm still trying to thread a thread to a thread, which I said before, you know, it's, it's hit and miss. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. But again, getting a bunch of them to work on the same, yeah, it's, it's pretty far-fetched that you think you're going to do that. So again, some extensions won't even do that. Depends on the type of threading they have on them. So this one's made for a hub that already is thread or is threaded because you can see I've got some, you can see some washer marks there where I've had them in here. And that will go in. Of course, my bolt will just go straight in like that. And then I have threads over here. So again, I have a problem here, right? That's not going to work. So again, it depends on what you have on how this is going to work. Now, also, I have one of these adapters that is, I took the threads out of it. So now the, the bolt can just slide through it. And it doesn't matter what's on the other side now. I can just screw all the way through the hole, or I can put a nut on either side. So there's, there's different ways to get it done. Hope I'm not confusing you here. So what I would do if I was going to be using this all the time, I would take a drill bit that's just a hair larger in diameter than the M5 hole threads in there. Not the hole itself, but the threads, because I just want to clean those threads out. So you can actually run the drill bit in there and clean those threads out if you have the exact right type of drill bit. So again, that's just one of those things that around here at the SRG, we have a lot of tools and we can do things like that. But I'm not sure I'm going to do that this time. I'm going to, I'm going to think about what I want to do here, but we'll figure it out and we'll get it mounted. But on this one, I won't have a problem. And I'm going to use this. So I'm not going to have a problem. Just mount this to the front like this, right? Because this is just a hole here. There's no threads in this flange. No hole, no threads in this one. So I can thread it to here. And we just have a set up like I normally run it when I'm running my cockpit. So anyway, that's just something I'd like to point out. Again, if Moses just had another set of holes that were not threaded, that would work. Or if they just didn't put threads in the holes that are already there. So there's different ways to get that done. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take this one off, obviously. And I'm going to mount this to here. And then we'll have this mounted here. And when we come back, I'm just going to have this installed on the rig. And we'll see how that looks. Before I get everything completely installed on my rig, I wanted to go over the options you have as far as using this adapter or something else. Now. You can use a different adapter, but it depends on the wheel also. Now, because I'm running this FSR, the quick release back here is kind of a proprietary setup for this wheel. The dimensions or the diameter of this actual hub is 72 millimeters. All right. So we've had the bolts up here on this plate, this metal plate that actually hold this to the aluminum plate. And if you saw the review of this wheel, and if you haven't, you can go look and do the look inside part. And you can see where these four bolts, two down here and two up here, are attaching this assembly. So we don't have six bolts around the inside of this. And even if we did, it wouldn't be a 70 millimeter PCD pattern like they have on their RS2 wheel and probably some of the other wheels that they have, right? So this is a 70 millimeter PCD, and the wheel that came with that has a standard Momo pattern on it also. So it all fits, obviously. And this came off of the RS wheel over there. And the RS2 version two is the same thing. And this does have a 70 millimeter PCD around it. This does not. So you have to go with this adapter for the FSR. Now, depending how Moza moves forward with their quick release adapters, and if they're going to keep using these that have the 70 millimeter PCD on some of their wheels and some proprietary stuff on other wheels, that will determine whether or not you employ this adapter. The whole reason I'm showing you this is if you've already got a few wheels and you have a quick release system like I do, uh, this happens to be the HRS. I also have a Q1R. Uh, they're both great quick release systems, but I'm just using this one as an example. 
So if I come over here, I can put the wheel side adapter on here because it does have the 70 millimeter PCD on there. This will fit in between these shifter elements without any problem. Of course, these bolts, I would not be using these bolts if I was going to do this. It would be a lot shorter than this and you wouldn't see them sticking up. But I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. So then, because you have this already attached like you saw before on that extended hub, then you could come in and put your Mosa wheel on here like this and you're good to go, right? You just go ahead and again, you're going to need this obviously and plug that in to the wheel as long as it does have the RJ11 plug in it. And of course, this one does not. It's, it's the older RS wheel. And even the RS V2 or version 2 does not have this plug in it. So currently, the only one I have is the FSR. So you can use other quick releases. The main part is going to be this. And of course, depending on the wheel that you have. And by the way, this will clear too if you thought that looks a little close. You set this down on the deck here. It's got plenty of room. So the hub coming out from a motor, a servo motor, should give you plenty of clearance because usually the hubs are at least three inches long, maybe even four. So that should give you plenty of clearance as far as hitting anything when you're turning your steering wheel. So that's not an issue with this particular button plate assembly. So you can use other quick releases to get it done. You don't have to use this adapter. Of course, the main player here is our hub and they call this the SO3 hub, I believe. So now what we'll do is go ahead and of course I'll be using this adapter because I have no choice with this because if this is 72 millimeters in diameter, there's no way I'm going to be able to get 670 millimeter PCD spaced holes in here. It's just not going to happen. So you have to use their adapter for that. That's why I have to use this one. If I was going to be running this wheel, of course I can't because it doesn't have the RJ11 plug on it. But if I was using one that did have that plug on it, then I could go ahead and integrate it into my current quick release system. So it is possible to do that, but it does depend on the wheel that you're going to be using. So I've got the USB box mounted up. I've got the USB cable connected to my PC down here. And that's right off the motherboard. Just to see what the power requirements would be for this. And currently, come around here to the front, you can see that the wheel is powered up with no issues. And I played around with setting the colors on the buttons and things just to see if that worked, and that worked fine. So I think we're not going to have any issues. What we're going to do is get into the Pit House software suite, and then we'll see what that sees and make sure everything is working like it should. A couple of observations here. Now, of course, I have this long 8 inch extension in here, and of course, that is so I can get my monitors down low behind the steering wheel and still have my surge motion of three inches either way available to me. And of course, very few people out there at sim racing are going to be using an extension like this. It's very long, obviously. So it does show some of the limitations of the cable that is included with the kit. This cable is 500 millimeters long in the coil position like this. Now I can stretch this out comfortably to about 900 millimeters. I'd still like to see this cable at a meter at least because that'll cover just about every application. And again, granted, not many people are going to be doing this as far as that long of an extension, but it depends on your simulator setup. So yeah, meter, meter and a half would be better, I think here, especially because it's a proprietary plug, RJ11, and it's not just a standard USB. So yeah, you'd have to make your own cable up somehow if you needed something longer than this. So I think they should go longer here. I'd like to see that. USB controller box. It's just hanging on here with some Velcro. And this is a 20 Newton meter midge motor called a small midge. And yeah, that's fine for what I'm going to be doing. You know, gluing something as far as the Velcro grows over here on these fins is probably not a great idea, but it'll hold it there for what we need and on purposes for our testing here. So yeah, that's where we're going to be sitting here with the setup. And yeah, next what we'll do is just get into the application and make sure all these controls are working. Then we'll jump into a game and yeah, see how it works. All right, so everything's running as it should. And remember the hub has some electronics in it that mimics the wheel-based electronics that allows the computer to talk to the wheel and also gives it full functionality of all of the inputs on the wheel itself. 
And all right now I have the Windows controller properties window up so we can test things. And some things work, some don't work. We'll go with the things that work. The shifters work. You can see it's lighting up a 14 there, 13 over there. The clutches work, and that's up in the X and Y axes. And this is a dual clutch setup right now. So if I let the right one out, it goes, I think it's 62%, and then I'll finish it with the left side, just like you would use any dual clutch. So that's where the bite point is set on this. Now, the thumb encoders, I'm turning both of them, nothing's happening. I can press the button on the right, nothing's happening, but the button on the left is working. The D-pads are working, our little joysticks. They seem to be all working. It looks like it got stuck on nine there. Okay, it went away. The encoders down here, the right one on the top does work. That's 28 and 29. Right bottom does work, 30, 31. Right left does not work. Nothing's happening. And the left upper is working. The middle one is not working. So in other words, it's going to be a little hit and miss with what we have here. As far as setting the colors on the buttons, that works fine. The screen changing, remember on this particular wheel, you have to pull in the right clutch pedal. And then we'll use this D-pad over here or this little joystick. And we can go left or right and go through the dashes. So that's all working. All right, so now we're going to pull up the Moza Penthouse app that has the suite of controls here for all of the controls and devices they make. And you can see we have the representation of the wheel here. Go back over here to steering wheel. So I can still make all the setting changes here that I normally could. And I can scroll down. There's the LEDs for RPMs. All that stuff is still there. You can change your axis combine, which is for like a clutch, dual clutch, axis split, or make it a button. So we're going to now turn these encoders on the thumbs here. And you can see they turn blue and they're turning. Hopefully that's big enough you guys can see that. If I go to the left one, same thing. It's working now. Buttons are working. Let's see if that button's... Yeah, that button's working there. The middle encoder is working. All the encoders should work now. There's the ones that wasn't working on the left. And I think both of the rights were working anyway, but there they are. And all our buttons are now working too. Up here, yeah. Good deal. So yeah, everything's working through the app, which means that app will interface with whatever game you're with, so all these controls should work. I just wanted to show you guys that before I get in and start doing some driving, just testing things out and make sure the dash is still working, all the inputs work. And yeah, when we come back, I'll be talking about that. So we're in iRacing at Sebring in the Ferrari 48 GT3, my usual testing setup here. This won't be a very long driving segment because I've already done a full review of the FSR wheel. So you can go to my playlist and look for that if you want to and see how that went. But yeah, the wheel is functioning as it should here. You can see that I can go through the dashes by pulling in the right clutch paddle and using the analog joystick there left and right to get through the different dashes. So that works just like it should. The buttons, the encoders, the rotary, everything is working as designed, the shifters and such. But you must have the Moza Pithouse software running in the background to get this to work this way because of all the functions that this particular wheel does. This is not uncommon for other wheels that I've tested that have dashes in them. They have their own software app that has to be running in the background to make it work properly. So yeah, nothing new there. Working as designed. I really don't have much else to talk about, <laughs> to be quite honest. As far as the hub adapter itself goes, the only complaint I really have with that is it's threaded. I'd like to see either it not be threaded or maybe have two different versions of that adapter, one threaded, one not threaded in an M5 screw hole size so that no matter what kind of hub you have on your wheel system that you're trying to put this wheel on, you won't have any problems with threads having to match up and trying to get them to connect without drilling out threads and things like that that I discussed in the mounting segment of this review. So yeah, working as designed. And only one other thing I have a complaint about is that you have to, I don't see anywhere in the software where you can change the mapping of how you change the dashes. Currently, we have to pull in that right-hand clutch paddle and then use the analog stick, as you see I'm doing throughout this little segment here. 
but if you're using the clutches in dual clutch mode, this can present a problem. You pull in that right clutch and you're under acceleration, of course, you're not going to get much acceleration, are you? So maybe there should be a way to map that to something else that you're not using. Because currently we can only do it when we're decelerating without affecting what's going on with the forward motion of our car. So yeah, something I'd like to see change as far as that goes. So yeah, that's about it for our driving segment. We'll just go ahead and get on to the final thoughts. Final thoughts on the Universal USB Hub and Steering Wheel Adapter Kit from Moza Racing. Out of the box, the Universal Hub looks professionally produced. I could find no defects in fitment or finish. This carries on to the hub adapter unit. The internal PCB also had the usual good component layout that looked to be easily serviceable if needed. The hub also has a USB-C connector to allow you to add power to the hub when you're connecting several controllers at once. Similar to the powered hub solutions a lot of sim racers are using now. The installation of the hub adapter is pretty straightforward as long as the hub on your direct drive motor doesn't have tap threads in its 70mm PCD holes. This because Moza has decided to go with threaded holes on the adapter. This can cause problems with the threads in the two holes matching up. I would rather see Moza leaving the M5 holes untapped as most motor shaft hubs I've seen all have threads in them. You can still drill out the threads in the Moza adapter to make it work, but not something you should have to do, I think. Maybe Moza could offer a version of the adapter plate with and without the threaded mounting holes to cover both situations. Once I had the adapter fixed to my wheelbase hub, it was just a matter of connecting the universal hub to my PC and the FSR wheel. You will have to make sure you have the latest version of Moza's Pithouse software loaded to get this to work. The FSR wheel needs Pithouse to be running for the user to have access to all the rotary and button functions. Everything worked as designed without any issues during my testing sessions. So no complaints to be had there. I think Moza went in the right direction here with a single hub solution instead of a single dongle for every controller like Fanatec did which can quickly use up a PC's available USB ports. Currently, the only wheel that you can use with this solution is the FSR wheel tested here. Moza claims that they will be adding the required ports to other wheels as they move forward. I think this is a good move for Moza, as it will allow people who want to use their controllers, but not their wheel bases, an easy way to get that done. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.